What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video order stuff, and today for you I've got my opinion of Sigma's 135 art lens for video use. In particular, I want to look at why you might choose this lens over Sigma's excellent 105 f1.4. Also, how it handles when you handhold it for video, and also how the autofocus is. It's unsponsored, bought it with my own cash, so I'm gonna be critical. It's time for me to shut up and roll the intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video are popped in the description box below. And of course, as I mentioned, this is not sponsored content, so your support means a lot. If you could hit the notification bell next to your subscribe button, it just means the world to me, plus you won't miss a video. So, what is this lens? Well, it's a 135mm prime lens with a large maximum aperture of f1.8. The T-stop equivalent, which I think is more important for us video guys, is it's T2. So that's pretty good. Now, 135mm is a medium telephoto range. Some may even consider it short telephoto, but that gives you an 18.2 degree field of view on full frame cameras. It also has nine rounded aperture blades, so I'm expecting the out of focus areas to look pretty pleasing even when stopped down. It has 13 elements in 10 groups and includes two super low dispersion elements and two F low dispersion elements. I mean, really, Sigma, there's no need to curse about it. We all get how low dispersion they are. These things help to reduce things like chromatic aberration, ghosting, flaring, and just increase contrast. The minimum focusing distance of this lens is 87.5 centimeters, so it's not gonna be fantastic in tight situations. The filter thread size is 82 millimeters, so that's kind of on the larger side if you want to use circular filters with it. I actually waited for my Revo ring pre-order to arrive before ordering this Sigma 135, because most of my lenses have a filter thread size of 77, whereas that's a bit bigger. It's a really good combo, the Revo ring and the Sigma 135. It's a great combination. And if you're interested, I did a really thorough review of the Revo ring, which I'll link here and I'll pop it down below as well. So what about the build quality? The Sigma 135 is quite a chunky and heavy lens as you'd expect, weighing in at 1.13 kilos, but it's nowhere near as long as most 70 to 200 lenses, so it doesn't feel too front heavy when attached. The art line of lenses is known for being beautifully constructed and the 135 is no exception. In fact, it might well be the nicest art lens that I've ever fondled. It uses the same matte black mix of plastic and metal that other art lenses have, which I love, but it has a reputation for being easily marked and scratched. It has a brass mount and does have the rubber gasket. It's not advertised as being a weather sealed lens, but it does say that it's dust and splash proof. As you'd expect, the Sigma 135 comes with a lens hood and a case which is just humongous. It even comes with its own strap. I'm never going to use these, but hey, there you go. So anyway, now let me show you how it performs.
Now, you may have noticed during that sequence, I showed how the 135 deals with flaring. And as you can see here, this is direct sunlight. I've got it at f1.8 and it deals with it amazingly. Stop down at f16, it's equally good. You can see we've got that classic starburst and the flaring looks just a touch more angular, but still really good. In terms of autofocus, I'm using the Sigma MC11 adapter and face detect I found works so well on these Sigma lenses with the newer Sony bodies. In this clip in particular, it was absolutely locked onto my face, even though some of the time I was looking down. I'm also wearing shades, but yet it tracked me all the way until my face was out of shot. And even then it realized that it should still keep tracking my body. By the way, that's the Tenba Cinelux bag that I reviewed recently for videography gear. It's so good. Definitely check out that recent video. When it comes to spot focusing, sort of iPhone style, it's not quite so good news, I'm afraid. I just found it a little bit inconsistent. You have to be really, really precise with where you click on the rear screen. If you click on an area with low contrast, it's gonna have trouble. I just found it a little bit inconsistent. And then it came to testing focus breathing and hold your breath, it's not gonna be pretty. Just look at where the lenses are on the edges of the screen and just see how our field of view changes as I focus from closest focus to infinity. If you're not familiar with focus breathing, it's a very common problem with lenses that are designed for photography. Often your focal length will be the true focal length, say 50 millimeters at infinity, but then at closest focus, it could be a slightly longer focal length say 65 or something like that. It's definitely not a priority when companies make lenses for photography. It's one of the reasons why cinematography lenses are so much more expensive. For comparison, this was shot on the Canon 70-200 f4 IS at 135 millimeters. And I actually found that with this Canon lens, the focus breathing was still bad, but not as bad as the Sigma 135. Side by side, I noticed that actually the Sigma looked slightly wider than the Canon at 135. And then once I started focusing, from closest focus to infinity, you can see just how bad, well, both of them are really when dealing with focus breathing. Taking a look at the images side by side with the Canon and Sigma both at f4, because f4 is the widest maximum aperture on the Canon, you can see some minor differences aside from the Sigma being slightly wider. The Sigma has the advantage with light transmission, but that's understandable because the Canon's wide open, so you'll be getting some vignette. I also noticed that the Sigma image looked slightly warmer. It's just an observation. All said, they're pretty close. However, when you unleash that 1.8 max aperture on the Sigma, things start to be less equal. We've got that gorgeous background blur, even though the props behind our subject are really only a few inches away. I can show you it side by side with the Canon, but is it fair? No. I mean, just look at that melty background. I mean, the Canon's not bad looking at all, but in comparison, I would call it almost brittle. And what about those bokeh balls with this lens? Well, they're going to be big and beautiful. This is at f1.8. And then at f2.8, and then f4, and then f5.6, I moved up to the higher native ISO on the A7S III, and then f8, and then f11, and then f16. So the balls look pretty rounded up until around, I would say, f4 to f5.6. After that, they're a bit more angular. So at the beginning of this video, I asked three questions. Why would you choose this lens over Sigma's 105 f1.4? Secondly, can you hand hold it for video? And thirdly, how does the autofocus perform? So why would you choose it over the 105? Well, the real reason that I wanted to ask this is because I believe the 135 f1.8 has been somewhat overlooked by the sheer existence of the 105 1.4. Straight off the bat, I would say the 105 is clearly the optically superior lens. But then I would say that the 135 is easily the better value lens. It's a good couple of hundred less than the 105 for arguably similar performance. What's more, the 135 is much lighter at just over 1.1 kilos versus the 50% heavier 105, which is at 1.6 kilos. And just to put that weight in perspective, that's more than Canon's 100 to 400, which is a beast of a lens. Regarding out of focus areas, you'll get a pretty similar quality and amount because of the 135's slightly longer focal length. I'd also say the 105 is definitely less practical. It has a pretty impractical filter thread size of 105, so to use filters outside you're going to be looking at a matte box setup. You also need to use it with a tripod collar, 
whereas you don't need to do that with the 135. So there we go, there are pros and cons to both lenses, one optically superior, one more convenient, cheaper, lighter, etc. It's up to you, what do you think? So next, can you hand hold the 135 for video use? Well, it doesn't have optical image stabilization, so as you can see, without help, you get pretty shaky footage. But with the standard IBIS stabilization from the Sony a7S III, it's pretty good. In fact, around half of the clips from the demo footage you saw before were handheld in this mode. Finally, I tested it with the active mode, which crops in a tiny bit, and it could be even better, although the crop is a little annoying. And I'd say with a focal length like this, that's not desirable. So the answer is yes, you can handhold it if you have some sort of sensor stabilization. Otherwise, I definitely recommend going with a tripod. So anyway, what about the AF performance? And really the question I'm asking is how good is the autofocus in video using the Sigma MC11 adapter because I bought an EF copy of the lens. So, and that's just because I use a mix of Sony and Canon all the time and I like to switch, uh, switch it up. And firstly, I found the face detect autofocus really good with this. It worked pretty flawlessly, but I kind of saw this coming. The Sigma MC11 with Sigma lenses on Sony bodies, on the, the newer bodies anyway, is a really good combination and it deals with face detect brilliantly. I actually did a separate video about this if you're interested, I'll pop it here and down below. As for spot focusing, sort of iPhone style, click and focus, I found it less good. It was it was responsive enough but got it wrong sometimes. To be honest, it's a big ask for a lens like this. It's a longer focal length, lots of glass to move, big max aperture. So to answer my question, yes, the autofocus for face tech, very good. Spot focus not so good. I actually found when I wasn't using face detect, I was switching over to manual focus just to make sure. So now it's time to go through my pros and cons of the Sigma 135 f1.8 and I'm going to start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Let's do it. Firstly, the image quality, it's pretty hard to fault it. It's such a gorgeous aesthetic you get from this lens. The way it isolates subjects, the contrast, the amazing detail, it's just lovely. The way it controls flares is really impressive, it's just, it's a very obviously modern lens design. The build quality is hard to fault as well. It's chunky and beautiful and the focus ring is buttery smooth. I also believe it to be a better choice than the Sigma 105. That's just my opinion, but I find it to be better value optically similar and way more practical. And then onto the cons. Firstly, I'm gonna mention price and I wondered whether to include this in the cons because compared to some of the other 135 lenses, it's not bad value. But I would say for most people, buying this lens puts a dent in your wallet for sure. I'm putting autofocus in cons because it wasn't perfect and being a fairly new lens, I would expect it to be just a little better. I find when you can't rely on it, it's gotta be a con. However, the face detect autofocus is very good as always on the a7s3. The weight is kind of a problem, it really is a heavy lens. At over 1.1 kilos I definitely have to think twice before putting this in my camera bag. You saw how bad the focus breathing is, it really is horrific. I can't really blame Sigma though because as we all know this is not a priority for lenses that are designed primarily for photography. So the Sigma 135 is quite something, however there are some other alternatives that are worth considering and here they are. The closest equivalent would probably be Sony's FE 135mm f1.8 G Master, but it will cost you 50% more. Just bear that in mind. Next we have an oldie but a goodie, and that's Canon's 135f2 Classic. It's definitely not a lens I would advise buying new because it's pretty old, and I can't say it's going to be quite as good as Sigma's. New, it's going to be a similar price. Second hand, I bet you can get a bargain. And then we have the Zeiss Milvus 135f2 which is available on EF and Nikon mounts. It's a pricey one though at over two grand. I've heard it's good, but man, that price tag. Finally, we have by far the best value option, which is Samyang slash Bauer rocking on 135 f2. This is gonna be under half price of the Sigma, even new, but of course it's manual focus, so just bear that in mind. And finally, to my opinion of the Sigma 135 f1.8, and it's a special lens. The aesthetic you get is just so lovely. The compression, the subject separation, the detail, the contrast, just leaves you with breathtaking images. And just to give an extra special mention to that contrast that you just get all the time. The clips that you saw before when I was filming, you know, often in the midday sun, 
I didn't use a lens hood once and I just had contrast for days. The Sigma 135 is brilliantly made. However, I really don't enjoy how heavy it is. I actually wonder whether at some point they might do a redesign as they've just done with their 85mm for E-mount. To put the weight in perspective, can you believe that the Sigma is heavier than all of those alternatives that I just mentioned? It's crazy. The focus breathing is just awful. I mean, I know that it's not a priority for companies that are making lenses that are primarily for photography use, and it's also one of the reasons why you'll pay so much more for cinema lenses. The good news is, if you use this lens at any kind of wider aperture, and why wouldn't you, the focus breathing is much less noticeable because of that, it's got such shallow depth of field. So it's reasonably expensive, it's big, heavy, pretty unwieldy, it's got horrible focus breathing, and yet, and yet, it's disgustingly, decadently brilliant. In a way, it reminds me of owning, say, a supercar. You don't need it, it'll be painful on the wallet, but you, you want it, you want it. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about the Sigma 135 in the comment section down below. I'm down there as much as I can be. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>